your attention please, thank you. Uh, before we get down to business, uh, I've got a winner on the number card, uh, Liverpool Jack. Liverpool Jack. Jack. <laughs> Got 20 quid for you, mate. Oh, right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think I need to give much of an introduction to these two legends. Please put your hands together for Mr. Gary Bertles and Mr. John Robertson. I'll tell you what, we've, we've, we've had some guests down here at a time, and uh, to be fair, Robbo's... Robbo's been down here a couple of times and we do need to get Gary on here at some point as well. I think the last time you were down here, Robbo, you did a full comedy set for us. So. <laughs> do you want to start with a joke? Oh, don't, don't encourage him. <laughs> I've heard these Murphy, about 34 Murphy. times. Murphy, 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 Murphy. Solicitor's in Ireland. Phone call goes to their office. Tell a picture of see if can speak to Mr. Murphy. He said, I'm sorry, Mr. Murphy's gone out to lunch. He said, well, can I speak to Mr. Murphy? He said, I'm sorry, Mr. M Murphy's gone on holiday. He said, well, can I speak to Mr. Murphy? I'm afraid he's gone home ill. Well, can I speak to Mr. Murphy? Speaking. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's start with Gary. Let's, let's, let's start. Still, yeah, that's a good start. I love your, I love your idea. He got... We got last last time Gary was on. It just went on and on and on, and nobody wanted him to get off the stage. So people were enjoying it, believe it or not. They were. He, he was. He, he caught. He caught the imagination. He, he does a great role in stage as well. Mick Jagger. He knows every word to every song. As well. Brilliant. Right. Let's. We can't. We can't go through the whole forest story because at the end of the day we'll be here. We'll be here till midnight. But having questions from the floor. Yeah, we will do that as well. Yeah, definitely. Just, just take. Just tell a couple of story. A couple of questions I've got for you guys first okay. of all. Uh, obviously. The obvious one, you started at one of our neighbours, Long Eaton United, up the road. How did you, what's the story about how you ended up at Forest? Uh, I was uh, at 16, um, I was given a month's trial by Aston Villa. I was on schoolboy forms with them. Um, my mum and dad let me uh, get out of my GCEs, which are GCSEs now. They were, that's how old we are, they were GCEs in those days. So I went there for a month as a left winger. What chance have I got with uh, this man? And I got turned down, so I had to come back home. Um, I had to get myself a job as a floor layer, and um, I played for Long, uh, Long Eaton Rovers, my Sunday side, and that gave me my, my love back for the game. And uh, I played for Clifton All Whites to start with, and then went to Long Eaton United. And um, you know, Brian Clough then came to see me on a Saturday afternoon. Forest, I think we're playing Oldham, uh, but he came to see me, and that's where he said the half-time Oxo was better than my performance. So uh, it wasn't a good start to proceedings, but I got carried off on that game. Somebody came through me, the centre half, and just took my pad in half. But I came back on, and I think that might have impressed him. Uh, had a month of, month of trial at Forest, and luckily that month of trial uh, was successful, and. Uh, I was on 60 quid a week, yeah, which was unbelievable in those days. What we do what we do need to do, sorry, what we do need to do is get that television off over there, please. Gre Greg's, Greg's, just, uh, Greg's just had the same go at it as Graham did yesterday. Uh, Graham, did you finally dis discover how to get that television turned off over there? Oh, well done, thank you. John, uh, your, your game went, went from strength to strength at Forest when, uh, when, Cluffy, when Cluffy obviously took over. How did, I mean, obviously a lot of it was down to you, but how did he make the difference for you to make you help make you the player you became? Well, well known and well documented. I remember taking care of myself for the moment. Is it on? It's got on, on it. Yeah, try that one, John. No, I forgot what I said. It's him. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. Um, it was actually Peter Taylor when Peter come. I well known that I'd never really take care of myself as far as fitness was concerned. Talking and diving. Football was, wasn't really that bothered about it. And plus the manager never fancied me, Alan Brown. And um, when Cluffy come, John Lawson told him that um, he thought I could play because he was asking John, the local journalist who he thought could play. And John said, me, luckily for me. But I still had a, a lot to prove, and it was a year later when we got to Augsburg, 
in Germany for pre-season training. And Coffey said, we played the, the, the night we got there, and then the next morning, when we were in the meeting in the dressing room, he says, I'll see you all up at the, the training ground. So we all went up there, sat around the park, and Brian Clough said, Peter's going to take the, take the job now. So we sat down waiting for him. The first thing he says, excuse my language. He says, you point at me. You fuck off back to the hotel, I'll see you when you get back. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Yeah, you fuck off back to the hotel. So, nothing other than do than go back to the hotel. So I'm waiting for there for three quarters of an hour till we finish. And when they come back, he just said to me, what's your problem? What, he said, what's your problem? I said, I don't have a problem. He says, yes, you do. You, you, I watched you training at the warm up last night. You're a nightmare. You were doing up your fingernails, doing that, stretching yourself. You were a disgrace. But the interesting thing is, Brian and I think you can play. So if you knuckle down and live properly, you get a chance of making a, making a player. And that's, that's how it turned around for me, because it was, it, I was going rapidly down the hill. You, you totally took it on board yeah, then? Yeah, I took it, yeah. One thing I've learned is that you, you get, if things ain't going right, it's not everybody else's fault. You look, look within. Can I just say though, uh, he's always been a disgraceful trainer, uh, <laughs> absolute disgrace. Even when he was the, the best player in Europe at that particular point. Pre-season training, we used to go to Woolton Park and that was brutal. We used to run up and down the hills, round the lake, and golden bollocks here. <laughs> the, the rest of us stopped about 500 yards down and it was a, the steepest slope. And he, he Gaffer always used to say, Robbo, you go 500 yards, you start at that tree up there with Lloydy and Burnsy. <laughs> Kid. And Viv. Oh, Viv. He was a bigger disgrace because he never did the lot. He, you look at Viv and you think, what an athlete he is. But he was probably worse than him at long distances. But then we did short distances. You're on the hill, lying on your back, and he said, right, go. And Viv was just gone, you know, up the hill, 10 yards in front of everybody else. But the long distances, he hated it. But yeah, he was the worst trainer I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Bar none. <laughs> Bar none. European Cup final, uh, we'll come to it in a minute, but just I just want to ask you that you're obviously, uh, I understand you, you you found out, I think you I, I think you got into the side later because Peter Wood was up front, I think, in the early time until you, you came to the club, if I'm correct, from yeah. my memory. And then uh, you obviously got the uh, you got the league championship, which was a fantastic achievement in the first season up. But I want to go straight to the European Cup year. Specifically, because one thing that intrigues me was how you guys must have felt when that first draw came out. You were expecting possibly to be going to far flungs of Europe, and you you got Liverpool. What was the reaction among the players? And well, I, I mean, I came in that that season. I wasn't there for the uh, champ, uh, the Premier League. Is it? Is Sco it? Scored though, Gary. Scored. No, no, but I wasn't in that previous season. So a lad called Steve Elliott, uh, when Peter Wood went, he got in the side before me because the gaffer fancied him more than me. Pete Taylor wanted me in the side, but obviously. You know, the gaffer got his way and uh, Steve came in. He was a great goal scorer for the reserves, scored loads of goals. And everything went wrong for him. Uh, he hit the post, the keepers made great saves. And then I got my chance against Arsenal on the Saturday. Uh, made my debut with Gary Mills, who's uh, here today, obviously. He was 16. And uh, after the game, we won 2-1. He said, son, your name will be first on the team sheet on uh, Wednesday. And you think, well, yeah, right, OK. And, you know, true to his word, he put me in there and... Uh, Having you know, been born and bred in Nottingham and my dad used to take me in the Trent End in the children's pen when I was a kid, you know, it just meant so much to score in that game. But when Liverpool came out of the draw, I remember John McGovern said, you know, we wanted to go to Italy or France and we've got bloody Liverpool. Um, and they were the best team in the world at the time. You know, they really were. And uh, everybody didn't give us a chance and we, we actually battered them at the, the city ground. And it was 1-0. I got the tap in, you know, you've got to be there for a tap in, but it was a tap in. And the Phil Thompson, about 15 minutes before the end, said to me, won't, uh, one won't be enough to take back to Anfield. Scored the second, and my second guy, I shouldn't have said it, I said, will two be enough? <laughs> and he, it's the first time Tomo has ever been lost for words, and, and to this day, because he worked at Sky, and I just reminded him all the time, and he's still bitter that we beat him. And Sooners are still bitter. But 
they re they realised what a good team we were. They said, you know, probably the best story ever in football that we achieved. Just, just want, wanted to ask you, John, in particular about the Cologne game. Yeah, of course you can. But talk to me about the Cologne game as well, if you would. That was a special game. Okay. I, I just remember. I was at the game. I just remember your you, you goal, mate. I mean, you scored, you scored a lot of goals, but that one was a bit special, yeah. Yeah, well, that was magic from this chap here. The interesting point is that I knew, it was, I knew where it was going to go, because it was on his right side. It wasn't going to get it away beyond me. I knew I had to get in front of the right back. And once I got and made my move, the ball magically landed at my heat. And then normally I would go all over the place, but it bounced, it dived and headed it in the three hole. Yeah, 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 that? yeah. Well, th th that's the daft thing I was going to say. I had a crap right foot and he couldn't edit it to save his life. So, <laughs> how we conjured up to get that goal between us? Big man in the sky. Nobody, <laughs> nobody will ever know. The interesting thing about Gary talking about the Liverpool game, the 2 0 battered them, is the interesting thing that the, the, the manager and the assistant manager on the touchline, I think Martin O'Neill tells the story about the end is that Colin Barrett broke up a move and set somebody he won the ball went forward twice, twice. Yeah. so when he won the, won the ball moved on Peter Taylor apparently is gone where's he going where's he fucking going where's he be? what's a fucking goal <laughs> that's true <laughs> we're short of time and I do want to open it up to the floor so can we just jump forward to the second final the second European Cup win Gary because I do feel I watched both finals I went to the first one with my good friend Greg over there second one we couldn't afford to go to we were kids watched it on the telly and in many ways we're under the cosh in that game and I thought in many ways that was a, a bigger achievement than the first game I don't know what, what you the whole campaign obviously I don't know what your guys think no it was it was far superior to the, the first one we were expected to absolutely batter Malmo but we only won it 1-0 which disappointed us but the second one against Hamburg that Kevin Keegan was there the best player in Europe and they were the best team in Europe they're not now people say well you beat Hamburg you beat Malmo you can only beat what's there at the time and Hamburg were head and shoulders above anybody else and they battered us absolutely battered us that day uh, Cluffy st people talk about 4-5-1 uh, we started 4-4-2 and Gary Mills was up front with me for 10 minutes and we were that under the cosh after 10 minutes he dropped Gary Mills back into midfield to play 4-5-1 so I had to play up front uh, by myself the hardest 90 minutes I've ever had in my life that was my 136th game in two seasons all told and I was absolutely knackered by the end of it I actually, actually had to get the club doctor out to come to my house because I, I got blood blisters all over my body. I was that exhausted. Uh, but I, I loved every minute. I wouldn't have changed anything for the world. People say, oh, I bet you wish we were playing now with all the money. No, not a chance. We had the time of our lives, loved every minute. There were no mobile phones or anything like that. We went out drinking, we had a crack. And um, I feel sorry for players now because they, they can't do that. They can't do anything apart from play football. And that's, that's a really sad thing about it. But we had the time of our lives, didn't we, to be fair? Yeah, and, uh, and got the goal scorer, of course. Got goal scorer, oh. of course. Well, I mean, who else? But him, he made the, the one in the first game, right, the, yeah. the brilliant cross. What was, it, what was the commentary? I've been waiting for John Robertson yeah, yeah, to do that whole yeah. game. Was it Brian Moore? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As if I had to be winged. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Trevor scored. The thing about that, Trevor scored the header, and he fell on the, uh, the shot put area. And he, he made out that it was concrete, but it wasn't, it was rubber. Yeah. So, but then Trevor scoring a header at the far post as well. But that goal he scored there, you know, he, he couldn't have put it anywhere else. Um, he said I did well. I was on the floor, I was playing against a big centre half called Bullyan, big bearded geezer, and oh, he kicked me from pillar to post. But I managed just to get a little toe poke to him, and uh, you know, yeah. we, we were one of those teams, if we went in the league, we couldn't. People found it difficult to break us down. And the defence that day were incredible. I watched the game again about two months ago. I couldn't believe how good we were defensively. It was just incredible. Just, uh, Gary mentioned just there that 
A lot of people look at the games Forest won, and we had this came up at the last uh, the last interview I did down here, and it's a number of people came up to me outside afterwards and said, "Is that really true what you said?" And a lot of people don't realise it. And you mentioned that Malmo and Hamburg, perhaps you know, not the greatest, uh, not the biggest teams in terms of names, but the, the FA Super Cup, uh, you actually beat Barcelona. Yeah, the, the Super Cup final, we beat them in over two legs. Charlie George was there at that point. Yeah, I think scored. Charlie scored at the City Ground and Burnsy scored in uh, Barcelona. Um, and missed but you missed the penalty. Yeah, you didn't miss Benny. I missed that one. <laughs> um, where's Gunny? Gunny's here. Yeah, I noticed Gunny's Brim was here. in. Oh, Hi, Brim. Gunny, Brim, there. Well, well, you want to tell that story about the. I'm allowed. You usually do. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, you, no, no, no. Come on, you tell me. All right. Where's he? <laughs> hey, he was a bloody good player, but very, very good player. Very underestimated, I'll tell you. Not by us a lot. Um, but the Hamburg game in the final, uh, we had Frank, uh, Frank Gray playing left back. And he got injured later on. And uh, we'd only got four subs because Stan Bowles chose not to turn up at the airport. We got to East Midlands Airport and his bag was going round on the carousel and Stan wasn't there. And he took umbrage because he thought he should have been in the team, so he just didn't turn up. So we had four subs, including Jim Montgomery. Gunny was on the bench and Frank got injured. And apparently there was a kerfuffle on the uh, on the bench. Right, who's who, you know who's going to come on for Frank? You know, well. We've got, you know, we've got this, this, and he said, well, Gunny and Pete Taylor went, fucking hell, we're in the shit now. <laughs> <laughs> and he came on, he was brilliant, you know, absolutely brilliant. But, uh, yeah, that's how it was in those days. Interesting thing about it. No, no, that's good. No, no, we don't know about it if you had that silver dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Made me a fortune there. <laughs> Right, we've got time just to take two or three questions from the floor. If you want to stick your hands up, if you've got any questions for either of the guys up here, fire away, sir. Um, yeah, uh, Gary and John, I, I remember seeing Kenny Burns play for Sutton Town on his way back down, right? So I'd like to know where you guys played on your way back down in non league and, you know, what do you remember best about it? Are you going first? Yeah. I played for Corby. Uh -huh. Hey. And then Sunday morning football, that's, I played for Cor um, Corby for three months and then Jack Denner took over a pub in uh, Vale of Eagle. That's, that's three months after I finished playing pro, I was out the game. That's how I went in the way. Did you enjoy it? I, I enjoyed Corby, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Sunday morning football, yeah. I, I'd never played non-league football after that. I, I had enough before I, yeah, uh, along at United. But uh, I finished my career at Grimsby, and it was the, two of the best years I, I had in football because I played under a guy called Alan Buckley, who used to be at Forest, and I, I, they were the only team that came in for me after Notts County. And I went up to Grimsby to have a chat with him, and I just sat down and said, right, what style of football do you play? He said, play 4-4-2 front foot, positive, I said give me a pen, I'll sign, I'll sign for 300 quid a week and uh, he let me train two days a week in Grimsby and uh, that's how I finished but my body told me at 36 um, I've got to pack in because I had a spinal fusion in 1984 and the arthritis was getting, in, as you get to an age like that, um, so I, I never was interested after that of playing non-league because people want to kick you. You know, and Burns, he was still around, so you didn't want to be kicked by that bugger because, you know, he kicked you in training. You, you know, you're his teammate. He's still, him and Lloyd, he still kicked you. Um, yeah, so I never bothered with it after that. Right, just got, just got time. Just two more questions. First two hands up. Come on, these guys, uh, these guys aren't going to come here very often, so it's a fantastic opportunity. Two of the greatest players Nottingham's ever seen. Have we got don't a question, scared. Roger? Don't be scared. Roger. Yeah. And Colin Barrett was in charge of looking after the wives. So that well, there's a shock. <laughs> <laughs> Did he find you, Robert? What happened? Nothing happened. He didn't know. No, but what, 
what it was was that we'd asked them before the game. Um, we're all right to go and see see the wives and families and that. And they said, no, we go as a team and come back as a team. We're not going to, we're all going together. Which I find strange because the year before they had no problem. Yeah. I think, I think it's only a thought. I think he thought we were going to get beat. And he didn't want his Galavant or in Madrid. So it was the last game of the season. There was no other game we were only. Only a theory, I think. Because there's no reason for not letting the lads go and meet the family. I mean, it's a European Cup thing. It doesn't happen every day of your life. Well, I must say, Rob, I was there and I came up shortly and thank you for winning the Cup for us. Well, well, thanks very much, Rob. Thank you. Rob, right, one last question then. Anybody? Anybody at the back? Like Gary said, don't be frightened. Gentlemen. Right. I don't use these words lightly. I'd like to say Robbo. World class. Yeah. I'm serving with what I've seen. Even today, by yeah. today's standards. Yeah. Thank you very much. And Gary. Not so world class. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the words right out of your mouth. Definitely, definitely world class. As I say, I don't use these words lightly. And the reason I say that, Gary. It's because you went from striker to centre half, and you're as equally as good. And that's all I've got. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Brian Clough. That that's, that story was quite. Oh, bloody hell, what's it? <laughs> <laughs> Brian Clough and Peter Taylor, when we won the league in, in uh, 1978, Gary was in the reserves playing central midfield. And when Peter went and his arguments were called over, over a tenner. They, they were going to let him go over a tenner because they fancied Steve Elliott. The luckiest thing that happened to Nottingham Forest at that time was Steve Elliott hitting the post at Coventry night on the Tuesday night and was hitting the post and that, that, that was a game because if I hadn't been for him, that, he, he, he would never have played. He would never have played. And they struck lucky because Peter Wilson shouldn't have been thrown. Because he never had any lined up. Except for Steve for, for, for coming in from the reserves. And the thing is, when, when Bad scored the goal, the first goal against Liverpool, I don't know if you know it, but Bill Shankly was doing a radio. <laughs> and when Bill Gary scored, I forgot about that. the commentator said, the Bill's who scored, and nobody's heard of this line. And Bill Shankly said, they're on radio. They fucking have now. <laughs> he was world class. I tell you, world class. No, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, he just told me you were in Graham Sudis' best 11 as well. I'll tell you what, they talk about David Beckham being the cross, best cross of the world. Nowhere near. Brilliant. He was the best cross you'll ever see, ever. Put your hands together, guys, for both of you. Two fantastic players. The game's just kicking off. So thanks, Gary, you're a star. Thank you.